very much for joining us once again, ladies and gents. As promised last week, I said we'd have a little look at this in this box. In this box is one of the most ridiculous incandescent lamps that I've ever come across. It uses 20,000 watts. So it's going to be like having 20 electric fires on all at once. Hopefully we'll have enough power to power it up on full power. So let's open it up carefully and have a little look at it, shall we? I'm going to remove this light bulb from the packing very carefully, of course. It's well packed. Mm. That is a light bulb. Let's get it out without busting it. This lamp is just over half a metre in length. It doesn't have a filament in it, chaps. It has eight garage door springs. How can you call that a filament? Look at it. They are enormous. 20 kilowatt. That is going to get hot. That's half the width of my finger, one of them springs. I shouldn't call them springs. They are a filament, but I don't know how you can call that a filament. That's like <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> this cable is 16 mil cross-sectional area and it should be able to handle 80 amps for a short time and that's connected to that lamp holder. So I think we ought to plug this lamp in and give it some slowly so we can have a look at it. Let's get it in there carefully. Cool, that's tight but we want it tight for a good connection don't we? This lamp is now connected to a 12 volt battery charger and we're going to observe something very interesting with the filament. A typical characteristic of these incandescent lamps is that when the filament is cold it will take on loads and loads of amps and it's only when they begin to glow red slightly that the resistance increases and the current becomes more normal. dropping down, little rattle there, you could hear that. Still not glowing yet. Alright, so it's dropped down to 20 amps. Still can't see it glowing. Ah, uh, I can just about see it, it's coming. There you are. I can actually, I'm behind the camera and I can actually feel the heat from that on my face. That is ridiculous. But of course that's only 12 volts. And the current there has dropped. But it is quite an initial start up. That's surprisingly loose in there. When you rattle it, you can see the supports. Well, that's cool. Yes, so the heat's rising slightly and the burning positions on these are vertical plus or minus 45 degrees. So it needs to be vertical 45 degrees or less that way or that way. And it can operate vertically. But I'm going to avoid that because there's going to be a lot of heat right at the top. So the best position, I think, would be like that. So we don't get all that intense heat all building up on the top. I think it needs a bit of that. All of it. <laughs> Should we get the extension lead out? As with most high-powered lamps, it's advisable to clean the envelope if you've accidentally touched it or perhaps even if you haven't because if you get fingerprints on that quartz envelope it can prematurely damage it and it can make the envelope rupture which is something we don't want. There's not a lot of pressure in there but it is backfilled with halogen. There's the ceiling nipple at the top and this one definitely looks intact otherwise it would have filled up with smoke even at low power. These are the two wires that come from the lamp holder. 100 amp connector blocks, so we're going to connect these up and then power it up. 
input, output. And that's designed for 100 amps, so we should be alright there. Let's plug it in then, shall we, boy? <laughs> this can take 100 amps, same as what's actually coming into the house. So on the end of this, we've got 100 amps. That goes in there, of course. Right, I've allowed 95 amps on this input, 90 amps on this output. Right, this first test is going to be on auto exposure, so hopefully the camera, the iris on it, will just shut down. So it may not look that bright, but we can certainly uh, see what's going on with the lamp. This will probably destroy the bloody camera. That is pulling 45 amps on the main side, 67 amps. The voltage has dropped down to 223, 222. Two, two. 94 amps on the mains, 20 kilowatt I've got up here. Nice and quite wide of heat. Voltage dropped down to 217 on the main side. That is unbelievable. Look, it's broke me out in a sweat. Bloody hell. It's like having a bonfire in the middle of the room. Oh well, the power supply handle 20 kilowatt, all right. That's madness. <laughs> I can't see anything now. That honestly made me sweat. Same test, but I'll take this up with manual exposure, see if it destroys the camera. It might do, it might do. Three kilowatt. Six kilowatt. Ten kilowatt. That's ten electric fires I can feel in my face. Twelve. Fifteen kilowatt. Twenty kilowatt. Ah, ninety-five amps were pulled on the mains. That's a lot. Can't have that, can we? Right on the edge of the uh, limit. Twelve kilowatt. 
85 amps on the mains. I only run that 18 kilowatts, push it a bit more. Put it in 94 amps. We are at 20 kilowatt. 87 amps, 230. See if it can break that. Easy. Woo. <laughs> Quick test outside, manual exposure. Take that just out of shot. Let's go crank it up. Thank you very much for watching the videos. I hope you enjoyed that. I will see you very shortly on the next one. Thank you. Bye-bye.